What's up, Leveron here, and today we're gonna look at work by Alexander Wotzmusch. What's up, Leveron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Painting Masters. In this one, I want to feature artwork by Alexander Wotzmusch. Uh, Wotzmusch is actually a nickname uh, based on his real last name, uh, just a play of the letters, which is Shumtov. Okay, so that's funny. Um, he's a, a watercolor painter, very, very unique uh, painter from uh, originally, I believe, from uh, Krim. Uh, Crimea, the, the peninsula. Uh, I'm not sure where he lives now, but his work is fantastic. So I read a bit about him and I'm actually gonna link to an interview in the description box uh, so that you can check it out and read it fully. Um, he says he discovered uh, watercolor in kindergarten, but he only really got it later on in life um, uh, after uh, art college, I believe. I actually wrote some stuff down for myself, but yeah, after art school. So uh, he has a very unique style and honestly something that I haven't seen anyone else do really 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 unique um, it kind of reminds me of a surrealistic impressionistic Salvador Dali kind of thing uh, he has a very similar feeling though it is very different and I really think uh, you should see it for yourself in order to really understand it. but I will say this it seems to me he has amazing control of the medium and then he distorts reality and makes it a lot more interesting in a very unique way, okay? So skews things around, plays around with the perspective, really things that I haven't seen a lot of people do in watercolor uh, painting specifically. So uh, I'm actually quite curious to know later on if you leave a comment below, let me know what you think of this. And also if you know any similar artists to him uh, in watercolor specifically, I'm very curious to know. But in any case, without further ado, let's jump straight into his paintings. And we're gonna look at a few and then go over a main one and focus on that. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm very excited about today's episode because it's so different than what we usually see. And I thought it's going to be a nice it's going to be a nice idea to show you uh, the artist itself just before we you know, take a look at the painting. So uh, this is what we have here. Uh, this is Alexander. Um, here are some uh, pictures of him working on his pieces. I uh, just thought it would add a more personal, I guess, uh, value to the video. Uh, and now we can start looking at his paintings. Uh, so so this is the first one that I wanted to show you. I have about 14 of these um, that I really wanted to share with you. Uh, this one, you know, it's it's um, it's kind of a viewed thing I like the most, but it also incorporates people. There's some action going on. There's some cats, and right off the bat, you see that this is very different from what I showed so far. Um, I really focused mostly on impressionistic. Uh, art and sometimes you know the more uh, maybe realistic direction with Nita angle and with this one it's so different uh, it's more like a surrealistic kind of with a touch of impressionistic in some pieces as you'll soon see uh, many of his works remind me of Salvador Dali although I'm not sure it was an inspiration or not I believe not um, by the way I forgot to mention in the start of the video uh, he uses I believe Schmenka uh, I will link again to an interview very interesting that I recommend you check out uh, that talks more about what he uses but in any case uh, beautiful beautiful colors in this one uh, he tends to use a lot of grays and a running motif you'll see throughout all of his work is his excellent control of wet and wet there are so many areas that are blended uh, that it's look at all of these areas here to the right everything is blended uh, together and it just works really well and it takes a lot of control to do that um, so this one is uh, one of the only ones that really focus on figures so I wanted uh, to share that with you uh, and notice all of the bleeding on the on the paper and the paint he has this very unique way of creating that texture that I honestly I'm not sure how he does uh, I think it will take a bit more research and I will share it in the description box or in a comment uh, if I do find out I haven't researched this fully but it could be using an, an extra uh, component um, into the water and making this kind of a bleeding effect so uh, beautiful I love this <laughs> camel and the people uh, there's a nice contrast around the figures they really pop if if I'm gonna zoom out you're really gonna notice how they uh, pop 
So next up, we have this one. And this was one of my favorites initially uh, looking at it. And I think the thing that really makes this one awesome is this strong red stripe here, uh, which I like a lot. Uh, I think that without it, it wouldn't have the same uh, interest, the same uh, depth. And many times when I try to obstruct it with my fingers right now, I get a very grayed out look. And I think to myself, many of my paintings lack that kind of uh, a point of strong color uh, like in this one. Now notice how the, the red blends, but it still is around the figures. So he probably is using, I read in an interview as well, he's using masking fluid for uh, some of his work. Uh, used it less in the past and more uh, t today. So take a look at all of these masts here, huge masts in the background and they're all done wet and wet, they all blended together so that's pretty insane. Uh, this one's another uh, painting focusing on people. I'm gonna up my pace now because we have a lot to go over. Uh, so another one that zooms in more on people and uh, I didn't want to be just landscape oriented so I decided to share this one as well. Notice he always likes to incorporate animals as well which I find very interesting. So very minimalistic. There's there's not a lot of things going on here, but the people, the boat, the bicycle, the animals, the movement is just beautiful. And also these effects of the water. Uh, this is one of my favorites of his just because of the, notice the very unique low horizon line. It's very, very low in the picture. Um, and what this does is really convey the height of those buildings. It's something that wouldn't have been able to been conveyed uh, without lowering really the, the horizon line, then making these look gigantic and monstrous and maybe even, um, I don't know, scary or, or just impressive. I guess there's this, um, the electric uh, tram, there's the people uh, all around the scene, very interesting, lots of lines running around, uh, some lines done with maybe opaque paint or something like this, beautiful. And notice how he also skews reality, so that's a very uh, interesting thing. Here's another one, this is <laughs> really one I love. Uh, notice how this area is so colorful and then it dips into pitch black and under that there's houses. I'm so excited about today because it's so different than what I usually show you and a lot of people ask for some Something different so it's a nice change of pace I think to look at some surrealistic work um, or things like that you know imaginative just beautiful 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 work uh, notice again the amazing control of wet and wet all of this is done you know th bleeding through here I think he may have used masking fluid for these uh, spikes could be because otherwise I don't know how he'd get them to look that way but this is just amazing I am actually really tempted to try and recreate some of his work uh, we've got this one really interesting you see this kind of a snake jumping out of the water or an eel and then the boat with the people fishing uh, there's this weird and the other edge of the snake looks kind of like a fox even to me. Uh, really beautiful. Notice how the wave again is done wet and wet, allowing it to bleed. Maybe it wasn't done wet and wet, you know, maybe he just pre-wet the surface. But still, look at this beautiful control. There's the water's foam. Uh, just beautiful work. Uh, notice these boats here. This is actually, again, one of my favorites. I think the thing that really works here is the composition and arrangement of all of the different elements. Just creates so much interest with the boats. Um, the way they're arranged, two together, then one here, one at the back. There's a really strong sense of, of location. You really feel you're there, uh, which I like a lot. And it really invites you into the scene using these boats. And notice again that unique pattern of bleeding of the, of the water. Uh, here we have another one which I love look at the abstraction on the people like this is figures here um, walking on some kind of a bridge or something like that very surrealistic scene there's this, these domes in the background there's this thing that they carry like a king's um, you know I forgot the name of this thing but um, and all of those different uh, components really and it's so interesting there's not really anything here that you can grab completely but you still get the overall thing and I think what makes this obviously the most uh, what gives this a lot of sense of depth and beauty is the wet and wet here and then very sharp lines there not dry brush by the way he doesn't do a lot of bright dry brush from what I saw it's more like a very dark um, rich brush um, next up we have this one. This one really caught my interest just because of the subject. It's like trash cans as you can see. There's this gloomy looking tree here. Recycle means I guess for bottles and some people and animals going through them. A really kind of a sad scene I guess. Um, but very strong 
character, uh, something that I love a lot. This is one of my favorites of his, uh, just because of the way he portrayed those trash cans. Uh, I don't know, it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful idea. Notice how just randomly this one bleeds into that. Uh, maybe he uses some kind of an extender, I don't know, I really don't know. It looks very different from what I'm used to. Uh, another scene, this one's relatively empty of people. You can see this, just this person uh, with the chimney here and then the rest is these trees and the, the structure itself. Lots of bleeding and, and wet and wet here. Uh, all of the dark uh, windows all around the, the structure. All of the dormers here on the rooftop. A very, very interesting scene. Once again, strong orange colors as well. Uh, this one was one of the only scenes that I really felt like were a complete quote-unquote scene, meaning he actually shows, uh, you know, the houses and the landscape and, and it feels a little more grounded, I guess. Uh, not a lot of floaty things, but still you can see immediately and recognize his style. Um, this one I loved, another one, uh, I think the, my main uh, favorite area is this one, notice the blue uh, with the red in the foreground, blue in the background, some negative work here, uh, just beautiful, and all of these colors work really well for me, notice the clouds as well, this is really interesting, I wonder how he did this, it looks like, you know, opaque paint bleeding into the, the blue, it doesn't look like negative painting, that's for sure, uh, so plenty of interesting techniques, uh, that he uses. Uh, let's go over another one. Okay, so this one uh, and this one, I originally wanted to review this particular one, and then I saw this one as well, and I really wanted to review that one. So I decided to just do a duo review, so I'm gonna uh, take a look at both of these paintings and uh, try to explain the same points, maybe even compare it between the two, uh, and this will really, I think, add a bit of another um, volume to that, or maybe some depth to the review. So first, the object fascinates me. The entire idea here is really beautiful. You know, you see the, the floating houses. This actually reminds me of the Palafito houses in Chile. Uh, I'm not sure if that's that was his uh, his inspiration, because the houses look completely different than what I saw there, but like the, it's floating houses on top of a kind of a dry, low-hanging um, water. And uh, then we have the boats here. Uh, I think what fascinates me here is how you're invited into the scene using the boats. Uh, notice this boat really stands out. It's so close to us. And then we've got this one here with the figure. Um, these ones with the seagulls or this kind of birds. Uh, the, the way the sea looks. We're going to talk about all of that in just a moment, but just beautiful. Same thing goes for this one. A very uh, beautiful arrangement. A little more figures, I guess, here in the boat. Very abstractly done. Uh, some more figures here. Uh, and fewer houses. There's also the birds. Uh, maybe another kind of loose bird here. Uh, and just the entire um, subject fascinates me. Now, the composition is very interesting. I think it's a little more interesting here with this one, just because he put the house is so high up the the painting you see is really high and he's painting quite large he prefers to paint as large as possible from what i read he actually paints on over a meter long painting so that's amazing uh, because it, it is it does get a bit challenging with watercolor so uh, in any case yeah there's the houses here and the arrangement of the boats is really interesting i think also here is uh, some interesting things are going on in terms of the composition um, and yeah, a lot of good stuff. Now, next up is the color scheme. And originally, again, with this one, a very uh, gray and muted color scheme. Uh, lots of grays and greens and, and oranges. Lots of uh, secondary, I guess, colors because it's mixed and grayed. So you've got the green in the ocean, you've got a bit of purple on the boats and a bit of purple in all of the structures. And then you have the orange. So this really makes use of the secondary colors. Um, and uh, I think what's nice here is that you see the rooftops are among the purest uh, colors here. So they, they, your attention really gravitates towards uh, this area after it finishes with the main keys of uh, points of interest. Um, here you can see a more colorful color scheme, I guess, uh, a bit more blue, and then the purple in the background, some uh, yellowy gray here. Uh, and on the houses themselves, there's a lot of variation. You can see a bit of yellow uh, in this one, and then you can see a, a bit of red and orange, just a mix of them. Uh, my Bluetooth mouse, sorry about that. Uh, 
so a lot of interesting things. Um, here you notice the ocean is very dull. There's a lot of dirt in it, uh, which is something very interesting. So it actually connects to my next point, which is uh, masterful use of wet and wet. And this is, again, something we saw so many times uh, up until this point. And it's, it seems to be really uh, his speciality. Um, the, the the whole wet and wet so notice how by doing these wet and wet and then contrasting them with these elements that kind of look like masks i would say it's really a bizarre scene but very interesting notice these look like faces um and they're done more sharply and these ones were allowed to kind of blur into the water uh i think this and, and notice in the distance as well it just takes so much control same thing here for the skies notice the clouds and how they bleed and then you you have this light spot on the bottom of the cloud very interesting just a very interesting scene in that sense um, here same thing I think the the wet and wet really comes through with the clouds and with the the details here this looks more like a shore of course and then this is where the water starts and this one is already inside the water um, so I would say really it's a bit more visible here uh, also a lot of the details on the on the houses here were done probably wet and wet a lot of bleeding things where the uh, areas where the colors merge together you can even see it here in the distance um, so very just amazing i love when an artist masters the medium and then decides what to do with it you know because many times you see uh, artwork that lacks uh, and it's like under the guise of of a style but it's not really it's just lack of abilities and i'm fine with that you know no one has to be the best but i much more i mean let's say i'm more impressed by this kind of thing uh so yeah now, another thing that really interested me were, were the sticks or the things that um, make the, the, the houses a little taller, you know. Uh, all of these wooden sticks, that's how I imagine them at least. Uh, they appear to have been done very, I would say, very skillfully as well. You know, just one stroke, uh, you don't see any inconsistencies in them. And they're also quite light which i like their value isn't too dark uh it's true for this one as well they, it was kind of done with maybe orange stripes and gray stripes so i think the orange ones represent the ones closer to us and the gray ones the one further from us you can see this here closer further closer closer further at the back same thing here closer 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 and farther at the back uh, so this is really interesting and i think uh, it's really masterfully planned because if if they were would have been darker it would have been really uh, uh, taking a lot of the attention from the top area where the houses are same for this one uh, but the way he did them was just right it's not too much it's not too little uh, it's really great now finally we have the figures which are adding this uh, story to this and it's really uh, making me curious you know this one seems like a fisherman he has this uh, rod or whatever and uh, there are some people here, I don't know what they are doing, on a, some kind of a journey. The reflections uh, are very interesting. Here, I think this captivated me a little more. This lone figure here, uh, dressed up very in a very interesting garment. Uh, it has this puffy thing around its neck. Um, so very interesting. It makes you wonder what they're doing here. What's the purpose of this? Because this doesn't look like a fisherman to me. Uh, maybe they're going back to their home, but how would they even get up there? So it's very interesting, this whole thing here. Uh, there's a strong story. And, and this is true with all of his paintings that I saw. And if you go back, you will see that every painting has this interesting story going on. Uh, just like all of the art we've seen so far, but I think he has a stronger, uh, more illustrative approach to actually sharing a story. Uh, so anyway, this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we're going to wrap up the video soon. I'll just, I just have to say that I'm highly impressed by him. Uh, and I do want to try and maybe recreate one or two of his paintings and see how that goes, you know, just to experiment, to taste it. And I think it's, there's a lot of value in doing something like that. Uh, so in any case, I'm going to now conclude the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let's wrap it up. Okay, so this is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I have his art is just incredible and it really made me think and maybe it made me understand it. it's maybe okay to think outside the box and to change things up in ways that are rather unexpected because I think 
I tend to get into patterns definitely when creating, and I think it happens to everyone. Um, a lot of my artist friends uh, say the same thing, that you kind of get into a pattern of doing things the same way, um, and it's just not that beneficial to your growth, let's say, over a long period of time. Uh, so in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. It, it opened your horizons. It's just beautiful artworks, and the one we focused on. I love it. I love everything about it. Just the way it's built up uh, is really, really spectacular. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget, if you still haven't, to subscribe, to, get, uh, to hit the bell button, to get notifications for new videos. I have tons of different shows now. There's Painting Masters, Business Monday, The Paint Show, uh, a, lot of, a lot of good things that I don't want you to miss. And I'm, I am publishing like four vids a week. So I definitely want you to be on top of things. So don't forget that. I will put a link in the description box to my uh, beginner's drawing course and also to my podcast on my Patreon page and many other things. So definitely check it out. Uh, and this is it. I will see you again in another vid real soon.